Welcome back, Shalligators. Well, the new season of the Kardashians' new show has premiered, and we're gonna break it all down because there are two things that stood out in this. Number one, something Kim said in relation to doing her Saturday Night Live sketch, which was, I feel like I'm trying to fulfill other people's dreams. Wow. Have we not all experienced that? The pressure to like live someone else's life? I'm gonna tell you how to combat that. And also, we're going to talk about Courtney's relationship with Travis Barker. Why are there so many Travises? Just like not even on the show, but just like in the world in general. I think we can put a moratorium on like the Travi. Anyway, she talked about how she made the first move with Travis after they had been friends forever. Is this a good idea if you're actually in love with your guy friend? I may or may not be going through this myself, so... As usual, I'm gonna use this as some sort of therapy. I'm like in my feelings right now. Look at my hair, my hair reflects my overall mental health state. Okay, we're gonna break that down. But before we do, OMG, you guys asked? And of course I answered, we're doing a second trip to Italy, see. We added a second trip from November 2nd to the 8th. It's gonna be a little bit shorter than our first Italy trip. We're going to Rome and we're going to Florence. I used to live in both of these cities. I lived in Florence when I was a kid. I grew up there a little bit. And I lived in Rome when I was in college. Both cities are like, I mean, they're my home. They hold my heart. They mean so much to me. And holy shit, do I know a lot about both. So I would love to see you guys on this trip. The first 10 people get an early bird pricing special. You're gonna save $200. And if you have been on the wait list for the first Italy trip, you actually check your inbox right now because you have access to this early bird pricing before everybody else. Because of course I wanna give you guys a chance. This trip is also gonna sell out, but I would love to see you. It's gonna be so fun. We're gonna bring our own photographer. And okay, it's for anybody in any country of the world. You don't have to be an American. You don't have to be an Italian. You also don't have to be a chick. You do have to be a gay guy though. No straight guys. Again, so many Travises in the world. Let's just stick with our girls and our gays. It's gonna be a really fantastic time, so I hope to see you guys there. Click the link down in the bio. All right, let's talk the Kardashians. So their new show just premiered on Hulu today, creatively titled The Kardashians. And you know, I love the Kardashians. Like, I, I do. They, they walked so I could run. I mean, they're still running and I'm not running as fast, but I am sort of running. They're driving and I am jogging slowly down that same highway. And it doesn't matter. So I was excited to see kind of what this new show would entail and like, why, why leave E and go to Hulu? Like, what's the point? I still don't have an answer for that. This one, tell me your thoughts on it because it kind of felt a little more fake than the first one. Did it seem like that to you? Maybe just because it's the first episode and they're like diving in and trying to figure it out. Hopefully it'll like loosen up a little, but it was funny, the opening sequences, they had like a drone like flying through each chick's house. And it's funny, they kind of like ranked them in order. Like they started with Courtney, she was like the first one and they ended with Kim. It's like, whoop, that's the pecking order. Yeah, it was like Courtney, then Chloe, then Chris, then Kyle, or like Kendall was in there someplace doing nothing. And then Kylie and then Kim. So it's like the two money makers were at the top, the two big dogs in the yard. So that was kind of interesting. And we see a lot of stuff that's still playing out now. Like we see Chloe and Tristan still together, just friends, co parenting. Okay. We see sort of the beginning stages of Kim's romance with. Pete Davidson, she said, oh, I called him. We talked about this actually in a recent video on how just Kim's little outreach to Pete before her Saturday Night Live debut was like such a brilliant, seductive move. It's, it doesn't sound like it, trust me. I break it down in a way and you're gonna be like, holy shit, that actually was genius. So go ahead and watch that video. It was up like, I think two days ago. Okay, let's see what my other notes about this show was. Oh, can we talk about Kylie and how she speaks? I just, you know, think that this time we're having fun and yeah, doing things that are fun for us. Does her mind work as slow as her mouth? I understand that I talk really, really fast, but my brain works this fast. I mean, it clearly. How is this woman a billionaire if her brain, does her brain work that slow? That can't be right. Seriously? 
I don't know. I just thought maybe like she just, maybe she's so uncomfortable being on camera and she hates it that she talks so slow just to kind of fill the airtime. And then you're like, I got nothing out of that. Do you know what she said? What is she even talking about? Like she could have condensed that into four seconds. It took three and a half minutes. What? Anyway, then there was a big scene. <laughs> Roblox factor into this episode heavily. What are, what are Roblox? R-O-B-L-O-X. I thought they were, as a New Yorker, I thought they were called like Rob Locks. Like Rob, who buys the locks with the schmear and the bagels, maybe some capers, I don't know. Half pound of Rob Locks. It doesn't mean that. What the fuck are the, I don't care. I don't know what like um, Fortnite is or Minecraft. Is this because I don't have kids or is it because I'm not cool? I'm gonna go with a little bit of both. <laughs> What stood out to me was Kim being picked for Saturday Night Live. And I talked a lot about the ins and outs of Saturday Night Live, like in the video with about Pete and Kim. So go ahead and check that out because one of my friends was on Saturday Night Live and I was there all the time. So I know like all this behind the scenes stuff. It's really interesting how it works and the schedule is like completely grueling. But one thing Kim said was, I feel like I'm fulfilling other people's dreams. Like I'm fulfilling my mom's dreams of what she wants for me. Huh. I had to laugh when I heard that. Because, you know, when we think about the Kardashians, what do we think about? What I think about is power and access. Whenever I have like a task I don't want to do, I'm like, the Kardashians wouldn't have to do this. They would have someone to do this for them. Whatever it is, whether it's a manicurist that comes to your house or someone to open your mail or someone to filter all of your annoying text messages and only read you the ones from people you actually care about and not like your annoying friends who are like, I saw a turkey. I've eaten chicken nuggets twice today. Do you like puppies? LOL. And so it struck me as I'd, interesting, ironic, sad, funny, relatable, that arguably one of the most powerful women in the world feels like she's living for other people, right? I feel like I've been fulfilling dreams for other people. It's like if Kim Kardashian, with all of her resources, can't feel this sense of agency for herself, fuck, man. First of all, what hope do the rest of us have, <laughs> right? But also, I think that this just goes to show what a human condition this is. That like money doesn't buy you out of that. And I even look at her like going to law school. It's like, well, her dad was a lawyer and he always wanted her to go to law school. Is that why she's doing this? Like, is she still doing this? And it's, if that's, oh, sorry. If that's the case, like, it's almost funny that, you know, she's willing to go to law school and be like, oh, it was someone else's dream, but that's fine. But wow, Saturday Night Live, <sighs> that's where I draw the line. Like, you got this flipped around, baby girl. But it reminded me of a study that I recently, um, I, it wasn't like a formal study, but it was like this, um, this interview that someone did with hospice care nurses. Now, hospice care is basically where you go to die. Like, you, you're put on hospice when it's like end of life palliative care. You can get off hospice, actually, which I didn't realize. It just kind of means there's a different set of like medical rules, who cares? I just went through it a few years ago with my grandmother. That's why it's like very fresh in my mind, but Basically, these women were end of life nursing care. And this interviewer was like, what's, what do people regret? When the end is near, like what do they regret? I don't know why I'm about to get so emotional. I don't know. I mean, I do, I'll tell you about it in a minute. But overwhelmingly, the nurses were like, they regret not living a life for themselves. They regret doing things for other people, whether that was marrying someone they didn't love just because he was Catholic or working at a job they hated or going to medical school when they didn't want to do that or having kids when they didn't want to or not having kids when they did. It was, I didn't live my life for myself. And I've really been trying to kind of like meditate on that because we don't know when the last day of our life is. It might, mm, blah, I don't want to get all morbid, you know, mm, and invite, those kind of manifestations, but we assume it's gonna be when we're 95, God willing. But if it's not, like we need to memento mori, as the Stoics say, remember death. Always keep that in the foreground of your mind. What would I regret? Am I living my life 
for myself because apparently this is the big thing. This is the big thing. And so I really have tried to like think on that. It's like, have am I currently and have I historically lived my life for myself? And I really do think I can say yes, I have. I really have. I have been a rebel and I've bucked trends. I have been exceptionally fortunate though to have a family who supported me in whatever my dreams were. And I guess my dreams weren't that radical. It wasn't like, I'm gonna be an anal porn star. <laughs> like they were healthy dreams, you know, self-fulfilling, but I never had this, this oppression over me. Like you have to marry a Jew, you have to be a doctor, you have to this, you have to that. It was, you have to be happy and you have to find your path and you have to really go for it and you have to maximize your potential. If there was any pressure on me, it was, you have to be a winner. You have to be a champion, okay? You're not a loser, you're not a victim, you're not a failure, you're not a C plus, you're an A plus. I was bred to achieve. And I don't think that's a bad thing. And it has its downsides for sure, but I know a lot of you guys feel this pressure for sure, especially if you have immigrant parents, for real. I mean, look at all the shit they went through and gave up to come here and give you a better life and it's like, you're going to college. I've got news for you. You're not gonna be a mime. You're not gonna be an influencer. No, I get this. So how can we live a life for ourselves? How can we not regret this? How can we kind of avoid what Kim Kardashian has be been dealing with? And again, it just speaks so much to how, how common this is, that money cannot buy you out of that pressure. Fame can't buy you out of it. In fact, fame probably compounds it. No, maybe you're not living for what your dad says about you. You're living for what a million people on the internet say about you. Well, shit, I'd rather only have to please one person than hundreds of thousands or millions, right? The way to do this, we always talk about manifestation and our life and our destiny as a restaurant, right? You go into a restaurant and if you don't order anything, nothing comes. I said the other day, you know what comes? Security, they escort your ass out. You're not just gonna loiter there. The universe is kind of the same way. If you don't be intentional about what you want, not only does nothing happen, the universe kind of forgets about you. Society sort of weeds you out. I mean, just look at it, your friends. Like, I don't wanna be around friends who have no goals, who have no dreams, no ambition. It's like, I don't know her. Like, I, okay, she's fine, but I, no, we're, no. But also, if we are ordering something that we don't genuinely want, we're never gonna be satisfied when it comes. And when we're at a restaurant, the hardest part isn't waiting for your food. I mean, it sucks. The hardest part isn't sitting down. It's not eating. It's figuring out, what do I feel like? What do I want? What are you getting? I don't know. Do you see what they ordered? What is that? Is that chicken fried steak? I don't know what that is. It seems weird. Hmm, what is that? It's deciding. It's deciding. It's the fun part. Ooh, I'm gonna look at the menu. I looked it up before we got here. But it's the hard part. But it's the crucial part because again, you don't order anything, nothing comes. You order something you don't want, you're not gonna be happy. So part of our life's work and the way to avoid living a life lived for others, what do you want? What do you actually want out of life? This is a big question and I'm not saying you're gonna answer it in like a snap. But this again is our life's work to meditate on this at all times, at all times. I ask myself every single day, do I want kids? Hmm. I do an endless 24 seven gut check on that. It's exhausting, it is. But I think that that's my obligation to make sure that it's like, no, I don't. Maybe in a month that'll change, maybe in a year it'll change, maybe in 10 years I'll be adopting because I really changed my mind. For now, that is authentic. I am constantly striving to stay on the path of authenticity, which means constant gut checks. And if it seems overwhelming to be like, oh, I actually don't wanna marry a Muslim. I don't wanna be a graphic designer. I don't wanna live in this town. <laughs> My whole life has to change. I get it, I get it. I'm not trying to spark some existential crisis with a video about the Kardashians. Start small. Do I like Pepsi or Coke? I don't know, I don't care. Of course you care, everyone has a preference. No one is 50-50 on anything. Like literally on any topic, no one is 50-50. You are 49-51 at the best, okay? Go get a Pepsi and a Coke, do a taste test. How do you like your eggs? What kind of sheets do you want on your bed? What size bed do you want? Expand it out. Would well, you wanna live in a house or are you actually 
kind of chill in an apartment. There's no maintenance, there's no yard. I've been a renter for a long time. I own homes, but I haven't typically lived in the homes that I own because I've lived in New York City. And I was like, I'm chill. Like, I don't want the lawn and the snow shoveling and the da da da. If a light bulb breaks, I'm like, get your ass down here to the maintenance group. Fine. But that took a lot of gut check. It was in the face of what everyone else was telling me I should want. Oh, you should be in the suburbs buying a big house by now. I was like, really, should I? Is that right? I mean, I look at my age on paper and I look at what other people are doing. I'm like, yeah, I should. But that's not authentic. For me, I'd rather live in a place with less maintenance. I can go to San Tropez for four months of the year. I can go to St. Bart's, I can go to Arizona. I have made my own personal checklist, my own menu that I'm ordering off of. It doesn't have to be anyone else's menu, but you do have to set what's on that menu. And do it, start really, really small. Do I want bangs, do I not? Do I like big hoop earrings, do I like studs? And then work your way up because doing that, this or that, will become habit. And when you get comfortable telling people, I'm a Pepsi girl, nope. I like regular Pepsi and Diet Coke. You're going to find very few people give a shit. Oh, okay, that's what she likes, whatever. They're, they're focused on what they're ordering for themselves out of their own cosmic menu, right? Now, there are gonna be some people who very much care. Maybe not about the Pepsi or Coke, but maybe about who you marry, maybe about where you work. Those people are called your parents, right? They're called your family, they're called your inner circle, they're called the people at your church. I mean, whatever that tribe is, they might have a lot of opinions. We've done videos on how to like process criticism from other people. And it's like, are you gonna be there to pick up the pieces? Okay, I married this Muslim guy who I don't know or like. Are you gonna fuck him? Oh, oh no, that's, that's me. Oh, oh, it's me. It's me who has to lay in bed with this person. Who, he also has to lay in bed with me, he doesn't like me. So if you don't have any experience in this category, right? That's what we said in this video. If you haven't walked this path, you can offer your opinion, but with all due respect, you're not walking in my shoes, so thank you. I'm gonna decide if I wanna accept or reject that. And if you aren't gonna have to suffer any of the consequences of whatever this decision is, with respect, go fuck yourself. Get out of my restaurant, don't look at my menu. This isn't for you, this is for me. It's tough, it's tough. It's not what society tells us as women to do. Oh, no, 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 no. We want to comply, we want to be good girls, right? But think about on your deathbed, memento mori. Think about Kim Kardashian. How would her life have been different if she didn't live for other people? How would yours? And there's, there's a danger in like kind of our own confirmation bias because regret is a horrible thing. And if we're going to be like, Ah, uh, nope, I've lived my life for other people. Oh my God. That sends us down a whole rabbit hole as well, right? Like, I wasted my youth, <laughs> I wasted my 20s, I wasted my 40s, I wasted whatever. Uh-uh, listen, listen to me. Look at me, I am the captain now. Nothing is wasted if you've learned from it. I'm serious though, nothing is wasted if you've learned from it. The one time in my life where I was living for other people, is when I got married, I knew it wasn't right. I knew I didn't need a ring and a wedding to know that this man was gonna stick by me. I didn't need that. But society told me I did. People I knew told me I did, it was strongly implied. And then I just took up where they left off and I was like, oh no, I need this. And it ended in divorce. And had I not been living for other people and been like, you know what, guys, we're not getting married. We're cohabitating, we're perma-engaged, we're good. Why don't you just stay in your lane? We're going to stay in ours. I mean, maybe we'd still be together. Maybe I wouldn't have that run that relationship into the ground. And that weighs on me. So I get it when you're afraid to look at the past because of the regret. But we cannot change what happens. We can change what it means, though. So what did that mean for me? That means... I have a real good set of data about what happens when I live for other people. And I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it anymore. If for no other reason, I wanna protect other people. I don't want to do that to other people because there's always fallout, it's not just us. 
as life gets more complicated and more people are involved in our decisions, kids, husbands, in-laws, all that stuff, like, uh-uh. I might be the bad guy in the moment. I might lose the battle, but I'll win the war. Because authenticity always wins that war. So let's switch gears. Let's talk Courtney. Ugh. I know she like makes my back hurt, right? Okay. By the way, iced tea with an orange, it'll change your life. Don't fuck with lemons. Don't fuck, don't fuck with lemons. Big Lemon wants you to think that lemons are the only garnish that can ever go anything. <sighs> don't sleep on oranges, okay? Anyway. So Courtney, her whole plot line now is her romance with Travis Barker. And it was kind of cute because, I mean, first of all, they showed Scott. What has happened to Scott Disick? He's like the portrait of Dorian Gray brought down from the attic. Such a niche reference, but if you know it, you know it. He looks bad. He looks so old and like, he's only 38. Like, bro, you're in your 30s. You're going to live at least twice as long. Well, how he's lived, who knows. But ostensibly, you could live more than double this, right? It's like one of his eyes is lazy and the other one's kind of drifty. He looked high in his confessionals, honestly. I'm like, are you on pills or what is this? He's like leaning back and like his mouth is moving in a weird way. Like it's almost like part of his jaw is frozen. I don't know. Did you guys pick up on this? It was just kind of like, hmm, doesn't seem great for him. But overall, his life doesn't seem great for him. He seems completely stuck in the past. I mean, the girls were like, oh, it's no secret that Scott's still completely in love with Courtney. He is on the outs with the family, you know, because he, that's his only family. His, both his parents have passed away, which is so sad. And now that Courtney has someone new, it's like, oh, well, bro, like out with the old, in with the new, you know? I mean, this is her new man. You can't be invited everywhere. It's, the whole thing is just so fucking sad. But let's talk about Courtney and Travis. <sighs> I know. I get a lot of questions from you guys about how to turn a guy friend into a boyfriend. And I have the same answer for you. I don't know. And I've said before, the one thing I will probably never be able to answer is that. How the hell do you turn a best friend into a boyfriend? I don't fucking know. I never have guy friends. I sleep with all of them. <laughs> like, but boys are for, are for boning. Females are for friends, boys are for boning, okay? Like, that's my motto. Like, I don't just keep a gaggle of, like, bros. Although I'm older, though. Like, when you're in college, yeah, like, you are. Because you're still trying to gain data about the other sex and, like, be around them in a way that you're trying to understand them. You know, so that that definitely was more common when I was younger. But as I've gotten older, I'm like, no, I'm not spending my time with a guy friend who I may or may, develop, may, or may not develop feelings for. Well, well, well. I am currently in the situation where I do have a best guy friend. And God, it's just such a mess, you guys. I, it's such a mess. It's literally such a mess. Like he's moving in a few months, but we've known each other almost a year. And it's like, now we're confronting our feelings. And it's like, well, you're moving. So got it, <laughs> great. So glad now we're realizing this. Like we should have either realized this seven months ago or not at all. Because now the cat is out of the bag and we're like, we can try to be friends, sex. We can try to be lovers. That doesn't see, it's, oh my God, please fix this for me. <laughs> you guys, please fix this for me. I don't know what to do. This is all transpired in like the last 24 hours. That's why I'm just like, ugh, like so in my feelings. I'm just... I don't know what to do. It's horrible. It's a, it's a complete nightmare. Um, it's like we're saying, I love you. It's bad. Can Courtney help us out of this forest? Let's see. So Courtney and Travis, she said we're friends for like eight years and they would play house. Like they would hang out because their kids play together, whatever. They would go to church together. They would go to the movies. They would, they lived a block away from each other. So in a way, they kind of cosplayed as a couple before taking that next step. And the producers were like, well, who did take the step? And she's like, I did, I did. And she's like, I kind of put it out there. Like we were flirty texting and she didn't get into specifics, which I kind of, I wanna know. It's like, well, what did you say? 
apparently she like kind of said something over text and she had said that like everyone in her life has been like hello you two need to like get it on like there's an itch there why don't you scratch it that eight years is a long time but sometimes some things take a slow burn because we're all super fucking immature but i love that she said how like she really did make the first move she's like we were watching a movie and he didn't make a move this was after the conversation that they had where i guess she put it out there he didn't make a move and then he started another movie and she was like i don't have time for this i can't do a movie marathon so like i kissed him like that's kind of what she implies that she kissed him and from then it was like off to the races so what are the pros and cons of making the first move now you know how I feel about this. You know my motto, never chase, never chase. It is kind of different when it's like a guy friend though. Like it is, it's like, oh fuck. Cause there's all this tension. I feel like when you meet someone on Tinder, you meet someone at a bar, it's yes or no. But when it's a guy friend, it's always maybes. It's like, well, well, well. And it's like, you're never on the same page at the same time. Like that's what I'm going through. It's like, when I was like, we are just friends. He was like, no vice versa and now it's like we're in this weird venn overlap where we feel this <laughs> such a disaster i just want this to be over i hate feelings <laughs> and yet all i want is feelings you know like you hate feelings you hate liking some of all you want is to be in love Ugh. so what i think we can do if we're feeling some type of way about our guy friend i think hints are great. I talked to one shalligator recently. I might even do it on a podcast, but she's working in a foreign country and she became best best friends with this guy who was coincidentally like from her like home country in the UK. And they started hooking up, friends with benefits, and then he's like, "Well, like there's this chick back home that I'm really into and I'm going to be leaving, so we should stop hooking up." She's like, "Fine." And then things fell apart with that chick and him back home. So they started hooking up again and he's going back to the UK and she's like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know if I should tell him I'm in love with him. I don't know if a long distance is viable. I, I don't know because I will eventually be leaving this country too and going back to the UK. But I don't want to tell him like, hey, if you really love me, like I'm willing to leave if he's like, what are you talking about? So I'm like, lie, lie and fudge it and be manipulative. And be like, you know what? Since you decided you were going home, I've really been thinking so much about it. And like, yeah, like I love it here. It's been really cool, but I just sort of feel the season ending, like the season of my life. And yeah, I think I'll probably be back in the UK, you know, at some point. And give a give a timeline of like four to six months because studies show that like that's about how long a dude can handle long distance before they start to like short circuit. And I said, look, you're putting it out there. If he's really into you and if this distance thing was the thing that was going to keep you apart, but that's like what he was always defaulting to, put it out there. See if he takes the bait. If he is genuinely very into you, green motherfucking light. That is all he's going to need to hear. That's all he's going to need to hear. Like we know when guys have liked us and we don't like them back, like they bob and weave through anything we say looking through for an open door. So you're saying there's a chance. I am not saying that. But if the world was ending, I, that's not what we meant by that, right? And we do that too. We do that too. Oh, he's just really stressed with finals. So after finals, I'm gonna ask him out again. No, no, we have to read between the lines. If it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. But again, when you're in a guy friend situation, it's not as definitive like that. It's really fucking hard. Maybe he liked you when you had a boyfriend, because this is my situation. Like, we both were dating other people last year, so it's like, well, obviously we're just friends. Like, okay. One person broke up, felt some type of way. The other person broke up. It's just, it's like you're just never in the right step together. So if you can hint in a fairly, I don't want to say a bold or too clear of a way, but I feel like maybe Courtney did something like that. Like, you know, we already play house. Like, I guess the only thing's missing is like mommy and daddy rolling around in bed together. Let's say she said something like that. If he was into her, it was like, oh, she sees me like that? You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to shoot my shot. 
Men are hunters. They're hardwired to literally take a shot at the thing that they have in their crosshairs, right? They are. And so I told the shalligator, yeah, like, put it out there. If he's into it, he's going to be like, you're going to come back too? Okay. Okay. You're going to have some conversations. But if he's not, no harm, no foul. You haven't been like, I love you. And how do you feel about me? You won't have to like go that far to get the writing on the wall. But look, the writing on the wall will be a little subtle. You're just going to have to read it, girl. You're going to have to read it or not. So if you want to know how your guy friend feels about you, make hints. And if he doesn't take the bait or if he acts weird, like, are you saying you like me? Gaslight him and be like, no, Travis, I'm not. Like, no. Gaslight him. Do what you have to do. I am 100% in favor of this. But you never know. Again, I feel like I'm not giving you like great advice on this because I, I don't know how to do this. I am in the middle of this too. So look, I am gonna open mic, open mic for the shalligators right now. Tell us down in the comment section. <sighs> Please fix this. How does this work? If you have dated, if you've gone from best friends to boyfriend, how'd you do it? Who made the move? Was it when both of you found yourself single? Did you go to him and be like, you know what? I should have gone out with you instead of Travis. I should have done that. Did he say that? I should have dated you instead of Victoria. Who knows? Who knows? I don't. I'm so sorry. This is such a bad video. I'm, you guys, I'm so sorry. I am going to do the workout weight loss video. I do promise that. I'm just, I'm just so in my feels today. I'm just all bajiggity and twisty and, oh God, he's texting me now. Fuck. He's coming over, you guys. Like if someone drunken says, I love you, not me. Like, do you bring that back up? If they don't remember saying it, do you bring that back up? I'm in hell right now. I'm in hell right, there's gold flames. Okay, anyway, join me in Italy. <laughs> Come on, come on. We are going to have such a great time. Come make IRL BFFs with me because I just got off the phone with a girl, a shalligator. Hi, Anna, who came to the Dominican. Like, we're all besties now. Like, I, I can't get enough girlfriends in my life. So come on. It's going to be so much fun. Definitely sign up ASAP so you can take advantage of that early bird pricing. And I will see you next time. I'll see you later, shalligators.